So recently I did a video about buying an RV park right in my backyard here in sunny Pensacola, Florida. What I didn't mention in that video is that we're bringing in brand new tiny homes into our park. These homes will be placed in the primo spots in our park and used as luxury vacation cabins. Okay, Jake, so that's great. You're getting new tiny homes, but wouldn't this video be a whole lot better if you actually showed us one of your tiny homes? Great question, and I'm glad you asked. All right, guys, enough of me. Let's check out the delivery of our very first tiny home to Leisure Lakes. You'll have equity in that deal, so whenever that property sells, you will get that original investment back. Hey, what's going on guys? How you doing? Welcome to Millionaire Mafia. Got a bit of an unexpected text today from the plant that's building all of our tiny homes. While we were supposed to be taking delivery of our first home into our park here in Pensacola next week at the earliest, I get a call, well actually I got a text and said, uh, hey, they're on the road, they'll be there early this afternoon. So. Uh, we're gonna have to go over to the park and make sure that everybody that we told to move out of the way so we could put into this new home is in fact out of the way. Uh, these things aren't exactly tiny. They're 13 feet wide by 40 feet long. So despite the word tiny, they aren't the, uh, the tiniest thing in the world. You're not just gonna take a truck and an F-150, F-250 and tow it behind you. So this one is gonna be really cool. Uh, I'll show you that video here in a second, kind of the walkthrough of the one we took delivery of. It's got two bedrooms and I can't remember if this one had the loft or not. So it's gonna be a surprise to me. We're kind of getting these ones piecemeal. We ordered a bunch of them all together. Uh, it's supposed to be what they call a 103 model. So that one should be two bedrooms and we modified a couple of them to have lofts. I just don't know if this one is one of the modified ones or not. It's gonna have a big porch. Uh, this one has an eight foot porch, but they do make 10 foot ones and I think they even have a 12 footer, which is just absolutely massive. There's a couple things that still need to be done to it. It's obviously on wheels, it's a tiny home. They're gonna wheel it into the park, it's on axles, and they're gonna set it as close as they can get with their truck to where we want it to be. Now, we already kind of know that because of where the tongue is, which is on the actual porch side, they won't be able to pull it all the way forward where we want it to go because we want the porch to be facing the waterfront of the, the lake that we have on the property for obvious reasons. We want people to be able to go out and sit, enjoy the view and all that kind of stuff. Well, because of the, where the water uh, line ends, there's no way they could get that big truck. So we're gonna have to have them put it close and then we'll use a, uh, an excavator to kind of pull it forward a little bit. Other things, obviously nobody wants to see the ugly, nasty wheels and stuff like that on the undercarriage. Plus, when the undercarriage is exposed like that, it, let, it has a very, very big impact on the efficiency of the heat or the cooling because that air is just rushing underneath of there and taking out all the cooled or heated air from, the, uh, from above on the floorboard. So anyway, we're going to put some skirting on there. Right now, we've kind of got a beachy vibe to this one and we'd like to have uh, kind of a, a cool looking uh, skirting. So we'd like to eventually go to like a corrugated metal that goes around it that look really sharp. You know, we just wanna kind of avoid the white. While the white looks clean and crisp, it gets dirty really fast and it looks nasty. And we might end up going even with like some type of hardy board siding, something like that, to kind of match what is on the house itself. And you'll see that here later on. A couple of other things that won't be in there is the furnishing. So this will be an Airbnb rental. If you're gonna have an Airbnb, you're gonna have to have the couches, the chairs, the silverware, the pots and pans, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, we're not gonna have that there today when it comes in, but that'll be down the road. Go ahead and comment below if you guys have either have or have had an Airbnb and the ways that you found were the best ways to, honestly, I'll, I'll be you know honest, the cheapest but most effective ways to furnish these Airbnbs. We got 10 of them at least coming in just for the properties that we own now. We're obviously under contract on a couple other ones, so we're gonna need more down the road. One thing that we need to do and be able to do in bulk is to get the furnishings to match. And so if, you've got, if you guys have anything uh, that would be useful for us, I would really appreciate that. Go ahead and comment below or just hit me up directly. I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, 
newbie at the Airbnb thing. I've got people I know that do it, know that it could be effective, and that's why we're doing this whole thing. Uh, put a great home, great rental, and a great looking park and a great piece of land, and it's obviously gonna do well. That's gonna be a new experience, and I'll try and document that stuff as well for any of you guys that are out there trying to get into the game but are kind of in the same boat as me and like, I don't know what I'm doing and I don't want to go buy a $500,000 beachfront condo and then it doesn't do well. So I'm going to try and guide you along that journey as well. But knowing I am not an expert, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion. That's about all I can really talk about here at the office. I'm going to get back to work. Next time you see me, I'm going to be at our park getting delivery of our first tiny home. Excited to see it and I'm excited to have you guys there. All right, guys. The uh, just got, got a call from the delivery service, so the truck wasn't supposed to be here for about another three or four hours. And uh, he's like, "Yeah, I'm uh, pulling up to your your park right now. So uh, where do you want it?" So I uh, beat feet out of the office, head down, grab the truck, and we're heading to the uh, the park to Leisure Lakes, and we're gonna go check take, take a look at this thing. So uh, pretty excited. Not gonna lie. Um, it's uh it's something i've definitely never done before is uh you know seen delivery actually i've never even seen delivery of any of our units before um, because most of them are old and crappy uh, or there's somebody else's uh, by the time uh, we get to the park so this will be this will be really cool so you're gonna see it uh, as soon as i see it so we'll see what it looks like all right there it is There it is, unit number one. All right, guys. Well, behind me is our very first and just delivered tiny home to our Pensacola Park, Leisure Lakes. Come and join us. Love to see you guys. Um, this is called a 103 model. You'll see that on the front here, the front uh, tongue here in a minute. But this is a 400 square foot tiny home. It's got one big bedroom and you'll see all this in a minute and a loft that's really killer. It's got a galley type kitchen, but it's a, still a pretty open concept in there. And it's got a really nice bathroom. And this one, because it's only got one dedicated bedroom, it obviously has a loft, but it makes it a lot more open and big feeling inside of the house because it doesn't have two bedrooms kind of cramped or, uh, you know, uh, pushed into to one spot. So me personally, I prefer the one bedroom, one loft for these things. Um, yes, you can get six people in these. You could put a hide -a bed uh, or a futon in the living room and use that as another two spots. But you can actually fit like four kids up in the loft. And I mean, honestly, that's what kids are going to want to do anyway. That's fun on vacation. So mom and dad sleep in the bed in the back and then kids sleep upstairs and hang out for the night. It's vacation. They're going to be doing it for three to five days top so you know enjoy it and uh, I think the two bedroom is more for like a long-term thing where people would want to sleep in one bedroom and then have like an office in the other one and then maybe have a loft available for when you know the grandkids or whatever come and visit them so all right so you can kind of see this behind me uh, I'm gonna do a quick walk around so let's go check this thing out
I don't know about you guys, but I am totally sold on these tiny homes. These manufacturers have packed so much awesome into 399 square feet, and you haven't even seen the final product. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. We obviously haven't set this home exactly where we want it, and we still need to install the skirting and furnish the inside of the home. I'm gonna be doing a video on the final steps as well as the final rent-ready product as soon as we have it ready for its renters. This thing will be ready to go by spring break. So if you don't already have plans and you're looking for something new and exciting to do, I've got the perfect little spot for you and it's even got a waterfront view. Until next time guys, here's to your wealth.